Dory and Broggy, a strange tale of One Piece. Co-captains and best friends who got into a fight over whose subscribe button for the Grand Line review was bigger. However, little did they realize that pressing either one of them would have given both regular One Piece content uploaded straight into their YouTube feed. Do not make their mistake. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we are turning our attention towards the existence of a fairly legendary island. One that has been continuously hinted towards, built up and scantily showcased in an almost similar manner to that of Laugh Tale itself. And that would be the giant paradise of Elbaf. Although I suppose that probably depends on what your definition of paradise is. More accurately, I suppose we could call it a warrior's paradise. Yeah, that's a bit better. But here is everything we know about Elbaf. So Elbaf acts as the only currently known hub of giants in this world. And this might be easy to forget from time to time, but giants are pretty exceedingly rare in their existence. Even in the new world facing off against very high level figures, giants are still a pretty abnormal sight to behold. Despite the fact that there is an entire race of them in existence. And I'm certain that many residents of the Grand Line and even the new world could go their entire lives without ever once gazing upon a giant. Speaking of entire lives though, we should also note that giants operate with the mantra of big size equal long lives. So for example, the two most famous giants in the series being the iconic Dory and Broggy, both former Elbafian residents, are currently 160 years old. And they would probably be considered as being in the prime of their lives because we also have an example of an elderly giant being Ja Rule, who was 345 years old when we encountered him in Charlotte Linland's flashback. And for all we know, he may very well still be alive today, which would make him a mighty 408 years of age. And something else that has been probably made quite clear just aesthetically by these examples is that the culture of Elbaf is heavily inspired by Norse mythology and medieval Scandinavian culture, i.e. Viking fun times. And that will only become more apparent throughout this video. But as is in keeping with the Viking lifestyle, I think that this quote from Jarl very much sums up Elbafian beliefs. A warrior is not defined by how he lives, but by how he dies. And I really I really do think that quite effectively presents the sheer pride and life's mission that the residents of Elbaf carry with them. With that said, there is also a fairly common misconception that all giants are from Elbaf, which the large majority that we've seen certainly are, but that is not the case for everyone. And one prominent example of this would of course be Jaguar de Sol, who actively stated that he was not from Elbaf and even that he found their practices barbaric. Then there are also characters like San Juan Wolf, the Yeti Cool Brothers, and even Oz and Oz Jr., who would appear to present entirely different sub races of giants. So so the whole term extends into very general territory. But we are, of course, primarily concerned with Elbaf, an island which is located somewhere within the New World, and rather intriguingly, to match its more mystical-based culture, the name Elbaf is actually Fable Backwards. Although in the official English translation, it is spelled Elbaf, like with a PH, which I suppose backwards could still be Fable, like Fable. Or not actually, because the P wouldn't come first, the H would. So it ends up being something more like Herpable. Good old Herpables. But Elbaf is an independent nation, meaning primarily that it is not affiliated with the world government in a similar manner to that of Wano. In terms of physical composition, we haven't seen a broad shot of the entire island. However, it appears to be a truly massive chunk of the old rock that is home to one of the largest trees we have ever seen in the series. Probably not the largest tree because that title currently belongs to the Sunlight Tree Eve. But then again, we currently have no idea how high or how deep this Elbafian tree runs. The tree itself is highly likely to be based on Yggdrasil, the mythological construct that houses the nine worlds. And with that inspiration in mind, it is highly likely that giants, particularly the ruling class, live in or perhaps on top of said tree. Which does bring us to the fact that yes, there is giant royalty, and as such, Elbaf operates as a monarchy, which is very in keeping with its medieval roots. Currently, we do not know of any king or queen of Elbaf. However, there is one fascinating figure that has been revealed to us, who is Prince Loki, and he is actually a comparatively young giant. We do know for a fact that Loki is a mere 63 years old, which which makes him one of, if not the most youthful resident of Elbaf that we have been introduced to, or at least sort of introduced to, like via a classic Oda silhouette. However, most of our solid information regarding Elbaf does not concern royalty or the giant tree, but rather the village at the base of the tree, which is rather creatively known as Elbaf Village. And this would be where the more common giants reside, as well as the warrior class, which actually, from what we've seen, most male Elbafians would be career soldiers. Or if not soldiers, then career pirates, because this is, you know, one 
One Piece and pirates are a bit of a big deal in this series. In fact, quite literally a big deal in this case, with one of the most fearsome crews in known history being the giant warrior pirates, a legion formed by the residents of Elbaf. And we have no idea exactly how old this crew is, but they do go back quite a long way. And this band used to be captained by Jorl and Jarl, our giant elders. Which brings up an interesting trend actually, because Jorl and Jarl were co-captains, a very rare hierarchical choice amongst pirates in One Piece, but that trend would appear to have continued past their retirement, with the role of co-captaincy being taken up by Dory and Brogy. And with these two at the helm, the giant warrior pirates were said to be a force that terrorized the world, a crew that no legion were capable of bringing down. This was over a century ago though, so we probably shouldn't judge things by the current standards of say the Marines, but the giant warrior pirates were still very, very serious business. So much so that Dory and Brogy were each issued a 100 million berry bounty, which I know does not sound like a lot by today's standards. I mean, currently Luffy is worth 15 times that at 1.5 billion, but this was the world of One Piece 100 years ago. So adjusting that amount for inflation would probably result in quite a startling number. I mean, if we did it by real world inflation over the last century, then we would end up with something like 200 billion berries, which is why we do not use real world inflation because that would be absurd in One Piece. But the giant warrior pirates continued to be a plague on the seas until one day, Dory and Broggy mysteriously disappeared. Which of course we know the story behind. The co-captains got into an argument regarding whose catch was bigger and they were forced to settle the dispute in true Elbafian manner, which is of course a fight to the death. And the idea behind this custom is not to prove who is right via strength, but for both combatants to relinquish any sense of agency and leave the outcome up to the will of the gods, which is probably best epitomized in the words of Dory. When there's a dispute and neither side will yield, the god of Elbaf decides the manner. Our god protects the one who is right and lets him live. And as far as we know, this dispute is still ongoing to this very day, so over a hundred years, which means we can safely say that if there is a god of Elbaf, apparently they are very, very indecisive. The rest of the giant warrior pirates did continue to operate though for at least 13 years after their captain left. Although eventually they were captured by the Marines and sentenced to execution. These giants were not executed though, thanks to the interference from a human by the name of Mother Carmel, or Sister Carmel back then actually, who made the argument that killing these giants could spark a war with Elbaf, implying that the army of giants gathered there could present a true threat to the world government, much like the forces of modern day emperors, but perhaps even more powerful. But after this event, Carmel garnered strong favor with the giants and was allowed to take up residence on Elbaf itself, founding an institution known as Sheep's House, which focused on taking care of orphan children. Or at least that's what it did in theory anyway, because in truth, Carmel was a child trafficker who set her sights on Elbaf to access, how shall we say, greater stock to sell the Marines. And actually it was Carmel who was responsible for providing them with their very first enlisted giant, who was John Giant. And through this, you could make the assumption that most members of the giant squad are likely former residents of Elbaf sold in this manner. That is not universally true though, because once again, Jaguar de Sol steps in to ruin everything as an enlisted Marine who was not from Elbaf. But this does of course now bring us to the tale of one Charlotte Lin Lin, a girl who was abandoned on the island of Elbaf when she was a mere five years old due to her uncontrollable power and downright demonic hunger tantrums. As an orphan though, Lin Lin would be taken in by Mother Carmel, who obviously had the intent to sell her to the world government. But most of what we know of the physicality of Elbaf very much comes from Lin Lin's flashback, which would turn out to be a very classically tragic ordeal. It did introduce us to another fascinating core custom of Elbaf though, which is the idea of the winter solstice. Basically, this is an annual 12 day fast that the residents engage in, followed by a huge festival afterwards to celebrate. And in preparation for the fast, everyone consumes large quantities of semla to give them enough nutrients to survive the following 12 days. And semla, as far as my understanding goes, is basically a cardamom spiced bread bun filled with all sorts of cool and funky stuff, which does admittedly sound delicious. And Lin Lin certainly thought so, as her thoughts were consumed by semla. Thoughts of her consuming semla, that is. Which would eventually culminate in a hunger tantrum that saw her kill the giant elder Jorl and result in Mother Carmel having to relocate her orphanage to another island. And this event is one of the primary sources of bad blood between Lin Lin, now known as the Emperor Big Mom, and the giants in general, not just Elbafian giants. Although skipping a fair few decades ahead, there would be a further rift caused between these two parties because once he had grown up, Prince Loki actually fell in love with and proposed to one of Big Mom's many, many daughters being Lola. The acceptance of which would have healed the feud between Big Mom and Elbaf, as well as given her access to its army of giants. Very unfortunately for Lin Lin though, Lola refused because she wanted to choose her own husband. And as such, this rift was significantly widened to where it remains in the modern day. This certainly is not the end of the story of Elbaf though, not by a long shot, as we currently have an ongoing effort in place to revive the giant warrior pirates, which is being helmed by the familiar figure of Harid. 
captain. He is currently the captain of a force known as the New Giant Warrior Pirates, once again showcasing the ever-creative naming skills of those from Elbaf. And this is because Haradin very much looked up to Dory and Broggy as role models. As a child, he always had faith that they would return and revive the crew themselves. However, over time, Haradin decided that this new generation of giants would take on the task, and this crew currently consists of four other members, being Stanson, Rode, Goldberg, and Gerd. Which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but remember, these are warrior giants we're talking about. So a gathering of five of them is a pretty terrifying force. So much so that they played a major role in the success of Buggy's Pirate Dispatch Squad until Haradin switched allegiances, that is, and is now a member of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Meaning that Luffy has inherited five giants and now inherently carries the legacy of Elbaf alongside him. And whether he wants it or not, it is there on his side. And after everything we've explored in this video, we should all know that that is a pretty amazing benefit. And in fact, this implicit alliance with Elbaf, or at least certain members of Elbaf, is one of the many well-slept-on features of Luffy's future in the series. Because if he could rally the entirety of Elbaf to his cause, then there is nothing that is going to be capable of preventing him from becoming the Pirate King. It would be as good as done. But it would still be far too early to make that assessment as it considers the giants of Elbaf to be a monolithic entity. However, there may very well be all sorts of different factions at play within the kingdom, as there are on almost every island we visit. So there is still an awful lot that needs to be unwrapped regarding Elbaf, which may very well take place in the form of its own dedicated arc. It's something that Oda has been building up towards ever since the nostalgic days of Little Garden, and I cannot wait to explore this island further, especially that tantalizingly mysterious, massive tree thing. But for now, that is everything we know about Elbaf. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.